Welcome to the Sega Game Gear system. Finally picked one of these up, super cheap, and it came with quite a few games and a bunch of accessories. Um, yeah, unfortunately, mine, uh, with the bad capacitors and all that, they're going around, mine's in the sound, so I'd have to put headphones in in order to hear anything, but let's get on to the system. Um, so, as many of you remember, back, way back in the 90s, when there was the war going on between Nintendo Game Boy and the Game Gear, um, I don't know if you remember any of the commercials, but there was like the two kids sitting side by side and all that, and, uh, one was in black and white and one was in color. That's the main one I remember. There was a few others, like getting hit on the head with a wild animal and a sniffing dog, but this is the Game Gear. So right now, I have the Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse in there. It's definitely my favorite game. I'm not much for platformers, but this is a good one. They did remake it on the Xbox 360 in 3D. Have not played it, but it's out there. Uh, let's turn this on. So the button is right here. Uh, did I put the AC? Oh yeah, there it is. I'm using a credit AC adapter. So you can see it there, Sega. Let me just change the brightness going on right now because it's oh so lovely there we go um the screen's definitely bleached out on mine <laughs> technical problems Sad part is it's the cord, not the system. That's the really sad part. Because I have a... It came with another cord. But I don't have the adapter. Came with uh, one of these. This is just a typical 9 volt. It's from my gaming chair, this one. And I do not have the batteries. There we go. Okay. So it's on. You have the um, two buttons over here, which you can't really see, but yeah, the two buttons right there, your one and two, then you have your start over by the Sega. Over here you have the directional pad. So there's not many buttons. A lot of the games on the system are pretty hard, you can see how bleached the screen is. There's several games on this. Uh, came with the manual. Or, nope, this is not a manual. This is an ad for bags. I have the Game Gear bag right over there. They actually, uh, for the car, they have these. I need to get an adapter for it. But, you know, it's your typical car adapter. This one's by Sega. You can really use any 9 volt. It really doesn't matter. There's several things that take 9 volts. You can, if you don't have a 9 volt adapter, you can steal it off um, some of your old modems. Uh, when it comes to games, you already saw Mickey Mouse in there. So here's Sonic 2, Sonic 1. Tom and Jerry, Jurassic Park, which plays like Contra. Then we have the Roadrunner here, and that plays kind of like Sonic. There's a uh, Batman, which, although it's cool that he swings doll, it sucks. And there's Aladdin, extremely hard. Personally, I prefer the version that was on Super Nintendo, but 
that's just me. I'm kind of a Nintendo geek. There's Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean. Double Dragon. This one's a glitched copy, so there's no background. And you might think it's horrible, but it's kind of weird and in a cool way that you're like, looks like you're lost in a desert. Basically, the cityscape's just gone. And so I actually had no idea it was glitched until I watched other people playing the game. And I'm like, why are they in a city? And uh, I'm chilling out in a desert. It's fun. It's still fun, even with that being said. And then there's X-Men. I played it, but couldn't really play it because my screen's too faded. So this game's considered one of the worst games. I don't know why, because I can't play it. My screen's too faded. But other people claim this is really a masterpiece. I couldn't tell you because I haven't tried it. Honestly, usually when it comes to old games like this, someone got this as a kid, they played the shit out of it, and it's got good memories. But the game's not good, just the memories with it. So, Batman, whatever. These two here, good games. Super, super hard. Um, if you want a more practical version than going with this, I suggest picking the games up on your 3DS. You can have the uh, extra large one, which is not quite the same size, but you know, that that's okay. Um, I'm a collector at heart, so honestly, I want the real deal. I want, it's the feel, you know, it's the feel. Not to mention, I never ever had one as a kid. So with the Mickey Mouse one, if you choose practice, you're going to, uh, you get like three levels and it's like really basic. And uh, once you beat them, it tells you to play the full game. Full game's super hard, super fun, but super hard. And there it is. Welcome to Veer City. Oh, help. Got a little picture there who one day came her broom and swept Minnie away Mickey was taken by surprise I should use those ADD reading skills man read faster it's no um, mysterious circus but still a good solid game and I'm super picky when it comes to platformers But anyways, let's show a different game. Let's see. Mean Bean here. A lot of people say this is the best game for it. It's um, honestly kind of like Dr. Mario. Um, like when it comes to visually, I prefer Dr. Mario. But when it comes to gameplay, I prefer... I way prefer this one. This one, they also have redone it, so you don't really have to go out of your way and find an old cartridge or anything like that. Because you can pick it up for your 3DS off the marketplace. There's actually a bunch of games. You can get uh, Columns, uh, all the Sonic games, um... Try to think what else. There's a bunch of them, though. But if you're a collector, you want to pick these up. The blue one is going to be a little more money if you ever pick up a like one of these. The um, red one is the most expensive by far. There's like a Coca-Cola one for the states. Um, well, all of America, because I'm in Canada. And, uh, that looks so lovely on here. Sarcasm, sarcasm. Let me see if I can fix the... 
Yeah, it's a little better. Um, with these screens, they're pretty faded. There is a company that got the rights, though, to redo these, right? So you can buy a new-ish one. There's a lot of companies redoing old consoles. The other day I saw... Um, it's kind of like those Ataris you see that have all the built-in games, but it was a Sega one, and it still has a slot to put in the old game cartridges. So, it's, it looked pretty tempting. It was only 50 bucks, but I want to test out the restaurant and see if I need any more systems after that. But, uh, yeah. So that's the screen. This, of course, right here is where you have your 9 volt. This cord shit. I need to get a new one. That uh, nice bright button there, that's your on. Cartridge, as you can see. Over here is where your headphones are. Volume, which this one is currently at max. Some of the games, you can barely hear, uh, hear it coming out, but... I honestly, I need to open it up, research the kind of capacitor I need, and just re-solder a new one in there. Um, here is your... Well, it's like a charm spot on the modern game systems, but this is so you can hang on to it, much like a camera. Because remember, these were super expensive. I wanted one as a kid, could not get it. The only reason I actually had a Game Boy is someone must have got like a game... The micro Game Boy, or whatever you know, the one that came before Game Boy Color, uh, cause mine I found my stepdad found it by the garbage can. <laughs> That's how I got mine. I was one of those kids that the best I had before that was those horrible Tiger games. So serial number. Take this out. Look right in there. serial number and all that. So when it comes to most of the games, they came with posters. I strangely got mine with three copies of Batman. Yes, I don't feel like opening these, but all three of these are for Batman. There's, uh, oh, here's my manual. Yep. Such a great manual. Yes, the wrist strap. As I get attacked by a booklet for trying to show viewers what's in here. No, don't show them the contents. They need to purchase one. Here's a uh, consumer reply cards. I don't know why it came with a bunch. And of course, the booklets for the games. If um, you get any games that actually do come with booklet nowadays, I don't know if you've noticed this, but it's like basically a sheet that says don't strain your eyes and then they just completely cheaped out and either... I mean, the books that they started putting in nowadays is pretty bad. So I can see why they just don't. Because why? If you're going to put a book like that in, it's not going to be nice and detailed like the old ones. Trolls. Screen. I don't like it how this one's all black and white. I prefer it when they're plush color. But I'm sure I'm not alone. Back when booklets mattered. It's actually pretty detailed despite the fact that... I don't know, the setup kind of reminds me of those old Dungeon and Dragon things. Like the cover here, just spacing and all that. Anyways, that is the review for the Sega Game Gear. Um, 
basically these things are super buggy they're awesome uh, if you're gonna pick one up try and get one of the newer ones if you don't have the cash because there are a few hundred dollars to get a new one when an old one will range. If there's something wrong with it, like uh, sound, it's going to be like $25. Uh, 15 if it's uh, part ones, but if you can play, it should be about 25 And then you're going to get up to the 50s for a special color, 100 for a retro rare edition, and then basic colors start at 100 I've seen so far. That's currently as of this video. Because I know when purchasing a retro console, a big thing is really how much money do you want to spend. As nice as it is to own the old one, sometimes it's just better to go and get it on a new system. I mean, most people who like handhelds have this now. It's pretty reasonable too. So anyways, have a great day.